In this video, I will demonstrate the proper technique for root tip removal and will use the maxillary first molar in the dog to do this. I am Brett Beckman. I'm a board certified veterinary dentist. And one of the most common complications of tooth extraction in the dog is root tip fracture. And removal requires proper technique and I'm going to demonstrate that to you today so that we can decrease the frustration that we encounter when we attempt to extract teeth and knowing that we can get these root tips out plays a huge role in our comfort level. We'll start out by demonstrating a mucoperiosteal flap for proper exposure to extract this tooth and we begin with a mesial incision and carry that on to just past the mucogingival junction. We're using our scalpel blade to start the incision through the length of the attached gingiva. And this helps to decrease our flap trauma with the periosteal elevator in that that elevator can very easily be passed apically and cause trauma to the flap. So if we start with the smaller, thinner blade and then progress as you see, we minimize the potential for trauma to that. So that exposed the vestibular bone. Now we will section properly uh, between the mesial and distal root and then between those two roots and the palatal root. So sectioning between the mesial and distal root, now we're moving to the palatal. And it's easier to have the patient in lateral recumbency enable to visualize exactly what we're doing here. Uh, this for, for the video demonstration is somewhat lateral, uh, but we can actually move the patient a little bit more toward dorsal recumbency so that we can visualize that even, even better uh, in the patient. So here, we're back to the exposure. What we're going to do is remove the vestibular bone on these roots to expose the tooth roots and then create grooves on either side, which allow us to place our luxator and also decrease the volume of bone surrounding those tooth roots. <clears throat> you can see we're actually making a little ledge up underneath the apical portion of that root to aid in extraction. Now what we're, we'll do here is we'll purposely uh, fracture these roots in order to be able to demonstrate the proper technique in removing the fractured root tips. So we now have a couple of root tips, several millimeters in length, and you can see we've exposed that root tip on the mesial aspect the same way that we expose the tooth root coronal to that. So here's the technique where we use a burr to paint over that vestibular bone until the root tip comes into visualization, and then we can create our grooves mesial and distal in the bone just like we did on that mesial root and just like we did on the coronal portion of those roots in order to facilitate extraction <clears throat> which we're doing now. Once that's finished then you can take and lever that out with your elevator and you can see we actually created a little bit of a groove up on the palatal side too so we can get that luxator up underneath that and move that tooth from palatal to vestibular, which makes it easier to extract than trying to move it mesial to distal or distal to mesial. And you can see that even with considerable time during that elevation, we're still having a difficult time getting mobility with that tooth root. And that is pretty typical of that particular tooth in that those roots are fairly long and a lot of times they're curved. So in order to 
properly extract these, these roots uh, in full to begin with, we have to really take a lot of time with our luxation. We have to remove some vestibular bone that allows us good access in order to avoid fracturing these in the first place. But with this demonstration, you can see how easy it is with good access to expose the root tips, remove bone on the vestibular, mesial, and distal side, and even a little bit on the palatal side, and then be able to extract the tips with your luxator or elevator. Once that's done, uh, you can close surgically. Uh, you, you probably need to do some dissection, both apically and caudally on that flap in order to get it to the point where you've got good exposure. And as an added little bonus here is uh, how we would place our luxator to extract that palatal root very large triangular root, very thick, very difficult to fracture that. So it's a pretty easy extraction from that point. Then once we're through with the extracting all three roots, we'll take our diamond football burr, we'll smooth the bone, make sure there's no edges there that are sharp, eliminate any debris that's there if this is a periodontal uh, uh, case where we've got granulation tissue in, and then we can use our scissors to separate the mucosa from the underlying tissue. You can see we're working that caudal and toward the apex. And many times, especially if we have the second molar is still present, we'll want to make a little vertical releasing incision distally as well. That helps us to bring that flap down and cover that hole that we've created when we've extracted that palatal root, which is very far palatal, as you can see there. So we dissect and um, it, as long as we can visualize, we can clip part of that tissue without damaging the salivary ducts. As you can see, we have a nice flap to cover. We use simple interrupted sutures, generally 4 out monocryl to close. If you learned a lot from this video, this is just a small segment from the simple and surgical extractions in the dog and the cat five-hour race-approved online course. You can access this by clicking below this video on the link which will take you to the registration page. This will give you total access to the course. You can watch as many times as you like on any device. Thanks again for watching.